The top 10 mods for Rome Total War to check out in 2020. I made a video a few weeks ago about 5 mods for the original Rome Total War to check out or revisit in 2020. The video was intended to highlight mods, new or old, that are very good and polished experiences and deserve attention in 2020. The response has been pretty great, so I decided to expand on that video and do some more digging. So now, I present to you the top 10 mods that I haven't mentioned already for Rome Total War to check out in 2020. These aren't listed in any order of how good they are, so take each mod's position in the list lightly. They are all worth your time. Number 10. Rome Total Realism Rome Total Realism has been around for quite a long time. It was one of the first mods I tried as a kid after discovering that Rome Total War's historical accuracy was not up to snuff for my taste. It was a great experience at the time, though I felt it was overshadowed by other mods such as Europa Barbarorum and eventually Roma Serectum 1 and definitely Roma Serectum 2 and 3. Rome Total Realism's development has not been stagnant over the years, however. There are several versions out, including Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition, Rome Total Realism Extended Realism, Rome Total Realism Anabasis, as well as Rome Total Realism 8. The team behind 8 is still working on a new, enhanced, less buggy version that I'm definitely looking forward to as far as I'm aware. Rome Total Realism's goal is simple to make a slower-paced, more historically accurate campaign and battle experience for Rome Total War. In that respect, this mod succeeds, and all of the different versions can definitely cater to different types of players, with extended realism being the most slow-paced. I highly recommend checking it out in 2020, or at least one of its versions. Number 9. Europa Barbarorum I stated in a prior video that EB was the most important mod to me, as it inspired me to become a historian. However, I made a point of not putting it in my list, because I felt that Europa Barbarorum 2 is its successor and thus it would be unfair to recommend the original since the second is on an improved engine and has features improved stability. Upon reflection, I think this is the wrong approach, because, as I mentioned in my review of EB2, there are many differences between the EB1 and 2 campaigns, and it does play very differently. The graphics and UI also give it a different feel. Europa Barbarorum 1 is still definitely playable and recommendable in 2020. One of the reasons is that there is still active development going on. You can still download the original final version, EB1.2, or you can download the new version that's being worked on, Europa Barbarorum Final, or 1.33. There are also several sub-mods that enhance the experience, and the one I really recommend for EB1.2 is Jiris's All-in-One Mega Sub-Mod Compilation Pack. I'll have links to all these in the description below, of course. I've talked about EB quite a bit in other videos, so I'll keep this short. If you like a very slow-paced, immersive campaign that is as devoted to historicity as possible, then EB is a mod you should definitely try. Number 8. Roma Serectum – When Worlds Collide submod. Roma Serectum 3 is a legendary mod in its own right. This submod really adds a ton of depth to the campaign map and especially the Hellenistic factions, and the screenshots and videos of the mod are quite breathtaking, especially for a mod based on the Rome Total War engine. If you love the mechanics of Roma Serectum, with its excellent battles and graphics, you will enjoy this submod quite a bit. Number 7. Barbarian Empires The Barbarian Empires mod series is a series that was recently released and is currently still being developed that changes up the gameplay of Rome Total War quite a bit. It is similar to a vanilla enhancement mod in many ways. It includes a ton of new historical battles, units, the graphics are second to none for a Rome Total War mod, and it has quite a few interesting campaigns included as well. 
There is also a newer version called Hellenistic Legacy that adds even more units, buildings, and other things as well. As I mentioned, it's essentially an enhanced vanilla type mod that tries to improve pretty much every aspect of vanilla while keeping everything, including the graphics, as vanilla inspired as possible. It is still in development, so take Barbarian Empires for a spin and leave feedback. There is also a more recent version called Barbarian Empires Hellenistic Legacy, which I also highly recommend. Number 6. Bronze Age. This mod transforms Rome Total War into essentially ancient Near East Total War, with an entirely new setting starting in 1290 BC. It is a total overhaul. Everything has been changed to suit the new era, the 13th century BC, on the eve of the Bronze Age collapse. You can take command of some of the most interesting kingdoms in history, Mitanni, New Kingdom Egypt, Kassite Babylonia, the Elamites, the Assyrians, the Hittites, the Nairi. These civilizations have not been featured in any other Total War officially, though the New Kingdom Egyptians are technically represented in vanilla Rome Total War, but let's not talk about that. This was one of the most interesting time periods, featuring nomadic incursions, environmental disasters, barbarian invasions. It's a perfect time period for Total War. The Bronze Age mod is based on some of my favorite civilizations and one of my favorite time periods, the last part of the second millennium BC in the ancient Near East and the Bronze Age collapse. So you would think this would be ranked higher on this list. However, in my opinion, while the mod is fantastic, it doesn't have as much depth to it as I would like to see in the campaign. The trait system in particular seems rather bare, unfortunately. I do enjoy how difficult it is. It is tough to manage your economy and you really have to scrape by to have enough troops to get anything done. This is especially true of the smaller factions, such as the Nairi. The lack of cavalry and the importance of chariot and infantry in this period makes the battles a bit different than regular Rome Total War. You can't just dominate with heavy cavalry in this campaign. You need a balance of troops, and you need to be able to get the enemy's chariots stuck in melee to really negate their effectiveness. It is a great mod, and I applaud the modders for the work they've done, but I would have gone a little bit further. If I have enough support, I definitely want to start working on a sub-mod for Bronze Age that uses a lot of the same mechanics, but changes the start date to 2400 BC, the era of the Sumerian Warring States and the rise of Sargon. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that. I know I would. Number 5. Extended Cultures 5. Extended Cultures started out as a submod for the famous Extended Greek mod that was basically the original Enhanced Vanilla modification. It focuses on giving every faction a lot of depth and really makes the campaign feel a lot more deliberate than Vanilla Rome. Its building system, recruitment system, and general atmosphere are very good, and it really makes the campaign feel more involved in a way that's not quite as married to history as a mod like Europa Barbarorum. I like Extended Cultures 5 a lot, and it's still being developed as far as I'm aware, so please try it out and support the modders by providing valuable feedback. Number 4. A. Howell's Vanilla Enhancement Mod this is a mod that came on the scene only a few years ago and has become quite popular, as enhanced vanilla mods tend to be. As opposed to many other mods I have talked about, this mod is perhaps one of the best in terms of general stability. That is one of the main focuses of the mod. Unlike other mods, it does not completely overhaul the game from top to bottom in an attempt to make Rome Total War feel like a completely different game. Its goal as is made clear in the title, is to enhance the vanilla game as much as possible, which includes adding a ton of great units, improving the historical accuracy and balance of the campaign map, replacing the Bronze Age Egyptians and Pajama Parthians, and enhancing the graphics in general significantly. It also slows down the pace of battles to a good speed, in my opinion. It isn't the mod that's most devoted to enhancing any particular aspect of the game, but its primary goal is an important one, 
to improve every facet of the game in such a way that preserves the feel of the original while keeping stability the utmost priority during development. In this, it succeeds. It is still being developed, so give it a shot and leave important feedback. Number 3. Invasio Barbarorum, Ruina Rome. This mod was released last year, and I had no idea. I had been waiting for it for so long that I had forgotten about it. The Invasio Barbarorum series of mods for Medieval 2 and Rome Total War absolutely deserve your attention in 2020. They are very polished and overhaul every aspect of the game in order to transport you to the death throes of the once great Roman Empire. It is so much better than the vanilla Barbarian Invasion campaign, which actually bored me to tears. Barbarian and nomad hordes, the Sassanid Persian threat, internal instability, all of these are in the mod. If you were not a big fan of Attila Total War, or can't stand any of the new to Total Wars, or if you just want to get a fresh new take on the late Roman experience and salvage the Empire, or whatever kingdom you want to salvage, then you should try out Ruina Rome now. Number 2. Invasio Barbarorum Restitutor Orbis Going off of number 2 is the newly released mod Restitutor Orbis, which is another one I was waiting for for a long time. This mod, again part of the Invasio Barbarorum series of mods, has several campaigns included, which cover the career of Aurelian and the tenuous situation Rome was in in that period. However, Rome is not the sole focus, and the other factions such as the Sassanids and the Armenians have all been treated with care. The UI, units, descriptions, campaign, everything about the mod is devoted to the history of the crisis Rome was enduring at the time, and it definitely deserves to be played in 2020. It has a very different feel when compared to Vanilla Barbarian Invasion, as well as, and is, it's very different from Attila Total War. The release is in beta, so it is not completely done, but that is all the more reason to try it out and help the modders by providing critical feedback. Number 1. Aristea. This one is a rather topical recommendation, but it is entirely deserving of this spot. While Total War Saga Troy is a well-optimized game and is a good game in my opinion, my review will be coming at some point soon. There are those that either can't stand the last few Total War titles, or really any title since Empire, and would prefer to play mods for the original Rome or Medieval 2. Or perhaps you only have access to a russet potato of a computer, and can only run the original Rome, and you are jealous of your friends who are playing and having fun with Troy. Well, now you can make them jealous by playing Aristea for Rome Total War Alexander. This mod transports you back to the Bronze Age Aegean, to the world of the Iliad. It has, it has heroes and units and factions that are all taken straight out of the Homeric epics. Every aspect of the mod, the campaign map, the units, the UI, the loading screens, the originally composed soundtrack, all of it has been redone with utmost care in order to leave no trace of the original Rome Total War beneath. The original soundtrack is also excellent and really immerses you in the campaign and battles of Aristea. The hero system in Alexander is a bit janky in terms of animations, but overall, this mod is a masterpiece and deserves to be played in 2020 if you don't like or can't play Total War Saga Troy. It also plays very differently from Total War Saga Troy since it's based on the Rome Total War Alexander engine and uh, it only features two factions, the Trojan Alliance and the uh, Achaean Alliance, so it's a very different game when compared to Total War Saga Troy, and is definitely more focused on the mythological aspects here. I want to mention a few mods that are a bit far afield from the other mods on this list, but deserve a look. There is an Avatar The Last Airbender Total War mod in development for Rome Total War. Since Avatar was my favorite show as a kid, I am very much looking forward to this one. I can't even imagine what it could be like. I'll be on board for an Avatar The Last Airbender total realism submod as well, of course, 
and of course the total conversion uh, recreating the conquests of Chin the Conqueror. Another mod that seems to have been restarted is the Star Wars mod, which is uh, quite interesting if you're a Star Wars fan, though there's no campaign mode yet as far as I can tell. Total War 1942 that transforms Rome Total War into a World War II game is also an interesting concept I honestly never would have thought possible. Another classic mod to keep an eye on is Rise of Persia, which is about the conquests of Cyrus the Great. It seems that the version 3.0 release may be on the horizon for that mod. Anyway, that's all for today. Hope you all enjoyed it. You can find links to all the mods discussed in the description below. See you next time.